All right, welcome to the Bookmap platform and details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, if you're new here to Bookmap, uh, you can find more information at bookmap.com. And note that uh, uh, when you um, uh, purchase the product, it comes along with education. Okay, there's an educational course. Uh, it's four parts, and um, it goes through just the very basics of Bookmap, and then on up. Um, uh, not not so much about uh, actually uh, the the program itself, uh, but much more about uh, how to use it, uh, how to identify a very specific behavior that is is really uh, uh, challenging uh, to view uh, using other software. Uh, so um, that's the advantage that you're going to get. Um, the educational course continues on. It gets more advanced uh, in that fourth part. Uh, and then every day we have the advanced order flow uh, webinar series. Okay, so uh, during those webinars, and they start in about uh, 27 minutes or so uh, every day after this webinar. Uh, and uh, we look at the live market and we go through the same content uh, that is covered in the educational course. So we, we uh, 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 you know, kind of talk the talk uh, in the educational course and then walk the walk in the uh, uh, live markets and see it right there in front of you, okay? All right, uh, let's jump in to the website here and take a look. Um, so if you're not familiar with uh, uh, bookmap.com, just scroll down here. There's an intro video here, information about bookmap. Uh, a bit further down, um, you, you'll see one of the uh, uh, connectivity uh, measures that we have here or um, uh, offers that we have here for NASDAQ total view. So all U.S. equities. Uh, it's a great uh, uh, data feed. Uh, a bit further down, uh, connectivity. Okay, so this is important because Bookmap is a uh, visualization software trading platform. Okay, you'll see some other uh, platforms in here as well, like NinjaTrader. Uh, Interactive Brokers Traders Workstation and TTX Trader Pro. Okay, uh, we connect via the API of these three platforms, uh, but we are a platform just like they are, so you can you can connect directly, and we recommend that it is better uh, to connect directly through uh, one of these supported uh, data feeds: uh, CQG, Rhythmic Gain, IQ Feed, Transact, or Dev Experts for that Nasdaq Total View. All right, a bit further down here are the different packages uh, available. So uh, you can um, subscribe monthly or yearly and you get the discount here. Uh, there's a free version. Uh, it is limited. You own no credit card required or anything. Um, uh, what you get though is only access to one digital currency. Okay, that's it. And the, the connectivity is uh, through GDAX and uh, it's free as well. So it's real time. Um, you get the you know full uh, version of Bookmap here. Uh, it's not the uh, with, without the uh, add-on indicators, uh, and um, uh, you um, uh, you the one-click trading is uh, here also, uh, but it's only in simulation. Okay, not in the live market. Uh, you only get basic education, and you also get just limited support. Okay, uh, digital plus here is for all digital currencies through the GDAX exchange. Uh, you get up to 20 um, uh, digital currencies, uh, and you get the advanced education. You get full depth of market. You know you can you can uh, use the one-click trading and click and trade right from the chart uh, in Bookmap. Uh, so that's what you get here. Global uh, is the um, everything in digital, but you also get support for uh, futures and U.S. equities uh, data feeds. Okay, we don't provide the data, but we uh, you have this the ability to connect, uh, and you can see that's forty-nine dollars per month. That too comes with the advanced education uh, and full support. And the global plus, what you get is everything in global, but you also get the uh, add-on indicators. Okay, so the ability to trade from the chart and these proprietary indicators we put together that start to identify larger players uh, out there in the, in, the, uh, in the market, okay? So it's a very specific um, uh, proprietary indicators for order flow, okay? Or understanding uh, 
uh, bigger players, okay, like the iceberg uh, detector um, and the uh, large lot tracker here. So uh, we're looking for not only like imbalances in the book, um, but uh, looking at specific players, okay? All right, follow us on Twitter here. You'll see all sorts of good stuff. Here's one from Futures Trader 71, a bookmap user. Um, and uh, click and uh, see what he's looking at. And we can go over this strategy here that he's uh, talking about. A uh, nice uh, th um, follow through through pretty high liquidity retest. Um, and you can see they kind of flip to the other side here and there's liquidity on the other side. And it kind of exhausts out here as well. And you get that continuation to the downside. Really nice uh, strategy, uh, but um, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that probably uh, maybe today in the uh, advanced order flow webinar. All right, um, so that's uh, Twitter. Uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, all sorts of videos here. So if you're new and, you're, and you do that uh, free version, uh, this is the limited support that you get, okay, so the, or education. It would be here on the YouTube page. Intro videos are here. There's a playlist for features and components. Uh, and then these order flow video snippets, okay, going through very specific things uh, in the um, uh, uh, order flow uh, that Bookmap can visualize. Uh, and this is where you're going you're gonna to get your advantage, okay? These concepts here uh, in these uh, two to three minute videos, we go over in detail in that uh, advanced order flow uh, webinar. All right, well, let's take a look at Bookmap. Uh, we're gonna look at the ES, as uh, things are moving pretty nicely these days now. Uh, and uh, and here we go, okay? So uh, what is it we're looking at here in Bookmap, All right? So um, for those of you um, new here, uh, and I see a few new new traders here in the, um, uh, in the room. Um, so welcome, and uh, just go through it. Um, uh, rather quickly because there's some other things I want to get to uh, today. Uh, let's close up the CVD indicator sub panel uh, and then let's take a look here at Bookmap. Okay, so um, there's basically just three elements on this chart. Okay, there's historical best bid and offer, the volume dots, this is the volume that traded on that historical best bid and offer, and then you can see this liquidity heat map, okay, the colored heat map here. Okay, what that is is a um, uh, uh, recording uh, of the uh, of the dome. Okay, so it's just not a recording of price and volume. It's a recording of of the total depth of market. Okay, so it, when you see this like really high liquidity here around this uh, 65 and a quarter area, well, you can see it's it's blue here. Okay, well it's high liquidity. And it's recorded here in this window here, and then projected onto the chart. And here's that recording. That's what it looks like. Okay, so we're ga gaining all sorts of information here just with these three elements, okay? Starting to understand where larger players are positioned down here, and you can see that they're staying in the book, and it looks like they're uh, absorbing all of this uh, selling pressure into them, okay? And, uh, and, and they absorbed yet again down here a little bit lower, okay? And they're also down here, okay, uh, at around 57 and a quarter. Okay. Well, that's going to start to absorb the selling pressure, and buyers are going to step in on the other side. These guys are long down here, these larger players with their limit orders. Okay. All sorts of information and just really, really good insight here, uh, just with these three elements. So um, let's uh, uh, take a look at uh, a candlestick chart so you can get reference to what I'm talking about, and let's take away uh, all the rest of the those those three items, those that uh, three uh, data um, items there, and we'll just look at this candlestick chart. Okay, it's a five-minute candlestick chart. There's only four data points per candlestick: open, high, low, and close. That's it. Okay, and that's the problem. Okay, candlesticks are are pretty ingenious, uh, and you can start to read the wicks and the bodies, etc. But it's just too opaque. Uh, we demand today more insight and clarity uh, to understand what's going on, and it's just not here uh, in this chart. Okay, so for example, what happened within this candlestick? Okay, what happened over here? Okay, was it buying pressure? Was it selling pressure? I mean, this looks like it could be, you know, uh, either or. Uh, we're not really sure. 
Uh, and we're going to look at this uh, area here. And, uh, you know, you, you would think, well, yeah, I should be uh, I should be buying down here. Right. Or, I, you know, uh, uh, maybe uh, if we can get up just a little bit above that candle, you'd be you'd be a buyer. Right. Well, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to find out that, uh, no, there's going to be selling pressure on here. And it's probably just a retest back to this area and then continuation. All right. So um, we want to understand what's going on within this candle. OK. And, and we have no clue here. We don't know where that volume traded. We don't know about little microstructure areas that I'm talking about, like the breakdown and retest. It's not in here. All right. Uh, so uh, let's turn on that microstructure. And that's just very simply. Here it is. Beautiful. Um, it very simply uh, displayed with the uh, historical best bid and offer. And that's it. Okay, because it records everything. Uh, it's just the best bid and offer. Very, very simple. Uh, simpler in concept than uh, a candlestick. Okay, there's no aggregation of data here. It's just the market scrolling by. It's like a horizontal tape. Uh, and uh, we're going to read it like a, like a tape. Uh, so um, now we want to answer that next question. Uh, here's, so here's our breakdown. See, see how we broke down below? Here's some structure here. We broke down below it and we came back up and retested where we broke from. And then we see that continuation. Okay. That's what happened within this five minute period. Okay. And it's, it's, it's really not uh, uh, helpful uh, by just looking at this, uh, at this candle here and understanding what, what really occurred. Um, all right. So a point made with the microstructure. Now, what about the volume? Okay. Well, who's in control here uh, within this five minute period? Okay. Well, sellers are going to be in control, right? We're going to see that they're going to they're going to be hitting the bid here pretty hard. Uh, we may see some volume up here on the on the buy side, but then uh, we're going to see sellers again uh, start to hit the bid and take control here. All right. So let's turn on that volume, and uh, let's see if uh, we get the insight here. Okay. And let's zoom in here. All right. Okay. So here's our five minute period. Okay. And let's bring up the volume dot size. Okay, actually uh, a little bit uh, on both sides here. Um, you know, so uh, uh, we we if I zoom in a little bit more here, uh, we're going to see a little bit more clarity. Okay, um, actually kind of surprised here. I mean, we do see the selling coming in here, as you can see the red dots pulling that market down. There's actually quite a bit of buying, uh, and they they uh, mount an attempt here uh, to. Uh, uh, and, you know, lift the uh, the offer. They just can't make it up above this swing, though. Okay, and then that's where the sellers start to come in on the other side, and you can see them, right? And uh, starting to uh, uh, hit the bid. Nice cluster of selling down here. Okay, nice cluster. Um, and um, and that's uh, uh, why we get this uh, kind of retest in these areas here, as well, due to uh, noticing all of the selling pressure. Um, and, um, uh, now the, um, so that's what we're looking at in terms of two, just two elements on that, on this chart so far. Okay. Historical best bid and offer, uh, and, um, and volume. Okay. So let's zoom in and just show you exactly what I mean here. Okay. All right. So here is our historical best bid and offer. Best offer is the red line. Best bid is the green line. This is one tick wide right here, okay? Uh, and uh, s and is pretty amazing market. It's basically almost always one tick wide. Uh, and um, uh, let's zoom in a little bit more, okay? So now you can see these dots here. These are transactions. Let's bring it up a little bit. Um, these are transactions on that historical offer, okay? Uh, we can we can know note exactly what traded here. Okay, volume of 10 here. We get the date, the time, and the, what was the liquidity here on the ask at this price level, and then the volume it traded here. Okay, here I, I just get what was on the ask. Uh, you know, so you only get four. Um, uh, well, no, you do get four lines of text here. Um, but uh, if I if I hover over this, then I also get that volume. Okay. So um, now there's more volume that actually traded within that one dot there. And we're going to see everything here. Let's go back to the bigger one because there's going to be more trades within there. 
and there we go. Okay, now look at the, the timeline down here. Okay, we're looking at uh, milliseconds. Okay, these are millions of seconds. I'm sorry, um, we're looking at microseconds, and the, these are millions of seconds. Um, and um, uh, we can, we can continue on, and you know we can go into uh, nanosecond levels, right? Uh, I'll, I'll spare you. You guys get the idea. But we're I just want to demonstrate the power of of, of Bookmap here. Uh, we're recording every single market event, uh, and then it's being plotted here. So there is no aggregation. It's just the market. Uh, and and how it really it truly unfolded here it's like a footprint chart is going to aggregate this okay uh, and you won't be able to understand all that detail now we don't trade at those levels right so look how bookmap will take that volume and then put it into a bigger dot okay so this is aggregated now right it's a volume of 10 overall okay but we're, every single event is still there right when i zoom in uh, because and, and why is that? Because we don't trade at those levels, and we just we need to know the overall what occurred at these areas here. Uh, and then you'll start to see as I zoom out more uh, and pr compress that timeline together, uh, you'll see this pie display start to show up. Okay, and what this pie display is showing uh, is um, uh, the overall. Okay, because there's so many transactions here. There's 46. Uh, a volume of 46, but there could be a, a minimum at 46 uh, um, events, trade events, okay? Uh, and there was buying and selling, and it happened so quickly here, okay? So if we zoom in, I start to pull it apart, okay? And we see exactly what traded here. But as I zoom out, okay, because we want that aggregate view, and we want to understand that within context of this microstructure. And we can see who, who won the battle here. There's more buying, okay? There's about three quarters more buying, and then there's about uh, one quarter selling. So we have that kind of insight here. We can see that up at this little microstructural area, this is actually one of the things we look for, uh, is the buyers to start to step in up at this area and lift the offer. And that's exactly what they did here, okay? There was more buying pressure in this little area right there. Okay, so those are just two elements that we're showing here. Right now, let's zoom out and let's get this third element onto the chart because this is where you're really going to get a lot of insight. Let's bring this dot size down. Okay. Okay. So we noted that um, uh, the large uh, selling transactions down here. Okay, down in this area here. All right. Yeah, Edson, it is it is fantastic. I mean, it's just amazing what um, to 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 really uh, uh, take a look in inside what's really going on in these markets. And to be honest, um, so that everyone knows, um, you know, why we why we display things this way and uh, how this came about. Well, it's from our history. I mean, um, actually, uh, this software. Well, uh, basically, the, the team was developing uh, algorithms, okay, uh, for for trading, uh, and um, uh, we we needed to develop our own software, and, and basically, quants develop their own visualization tools because they need to test and know and understand exactly how their algorithms are behaving, and that's where this this software came from. Okay, that's why we record such you know uh, uh, small you know, low, low time frames, because we needed to know the details of exactly what unfolded. Uh, and, um, and that's why it looks this way as well. So, uh, that third element, okay, we're, you know, we can see this cluster here and then we see this rebound. Well, that doesn't make too much sense, right? I mean, why would there be all this aggressive selling? And then you see a really nice rebound here. Okay. That's that third element we're going to see. And we're going to see a cluster of limit orders here. Most of us never see this. Uh, the closest that we would see it would be in the dome. Okay, we would see that there's liquidity here in the dome uh, on the uh, uh, on the on the bid uh, compared to the offer, and um, and and you can see that we're as we're driving lower here. I mean, this is where traders are lined up in the dome uh, to trade. They're providing liquidity here on the offer, and then uh, below current price is on the bid. They want to be buyers down here. Okay, so 
uh, even a footprint chart, I mean, it, it's not displaying, it's just displaying and, and aggregating. It's not only is it um, not displaying the limit orders, uh, it's it's aggregating that data within a, a rotation bar or a candlestick or a time or, or whatever. Uh, and you don't get to see the microstructure. So it, it, the, the, that footprint chart, and I, I, I like footprint charts quite a bit, but for those two reasons, uh, uh, this is superior. Uh, because we're getting so much more insight. Uh, we're going to see that we, we traded right into lots of uh, limit orders down here. Okay, and we'll just turn this on. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so actually it occurred over here, and then there were some down here as well. Okay, and let's take the candlestick off. Okay, and here's that absorption, okay, into this area here. A little bit more. Uh, and then uh, and then we see the nice rebound here. Okay, here they are again down here. It looks like they kind of there's going to be probably a combination of absorption and uh, uh, pulling. Uh, but this was key uh, to to understand. Let's zoom in here. Okay, and then this is really what unfolded. Okay, high levels of liquidity and 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 uh, the market's trading right into them. Okay, and uh, we can we can see what what traded down here. Over 1,300 contracts traded here at 61. All right. Okay, so we're getting a uh, very uh, objective view of what occurred in the market with these three elements. Okay, that historical best bid and offer, the volume, and the um, uh, limit orders. Okay, so let's let me let me just go to the current market, and I want to show you how this is working. All right. Um, so that uh, uh, we really uh, get a, get an understanding here of the heat map. Okay, so to the right of this white line, what we're looking at here uh, is uh, uh, the best bid and offer. Okay, and then we see this heat map. Okay, this heat map is is just like the dome over here. Okay, the current order book. This is our dome depth of market. Um, you can see the price ladder here, of course, uh, and then here's your best bid and offer. Right, so these levels here, you look at the numbers, okay, and you can see down here, well, there's 800 contracts. It's by far the biggest in the book, okay. It's at this half figure of 2650 as well, so there's no surprise there, right? Uh, so um, uh, that that's um, we just take the numbers here, uh, and they're painted in the heat map, okay. Look at a little bit of spoofing here, trying to get it down into this uh, 2650, looks like, um, and uh, skewing that auction. Okay, we're just witnessing that right now. Okay, great stuff to see. Uh, and uh, or uh, you know maybe this guy uh, really really does want to be a seller here, um, and uh, he's waiting for a uh, uh, market to maybe pull back and 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 get involved in the market here. We'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, it's it, when the market comes up here and tests him. But to me, it looked more like a a little bit of a push or nudge to get it below this 26.50. Uh, and uh, into uh, higher areas of liquidity. We're probably going to see some iceberg orders down here. This is our iceberg detector. Okay, yeah, here's 157. Okay. Not as many as I thought uh, in some of these areas here. All right, well, that's fine. Uh, let's take that back off for now. All right, yeah, they're getting, being really aggressive on the uh, on the offer. Look at this new uh, phenomenon just showing up here now. Okay, very very aggressive. Uh, so um, we take the numbers, we uh, uh, paint it in this window here, and you'll see that when the numbers change, the heat map changes. Now that's what the the change looks like here when it's plotted onto the chart historically. Okay, so for for example, in this little area here. We can see them uh, adding some liquidity in, and it, is, it gets blue, becomes blue. It gets uh, lighter blue, so there's more liquidity. Okay, it started with about 500 or 462, went up to about 550, okay, 575. Then here it's 639 or 35. Uh, you get the idea, okay? So um, uh, that's what we're looking at here. Okay, and we're able to gain a lot of insight uh, by uh, by looking at this data. Okay, in fact, uh, what we're starting to see here is, um, uh, you know, I was calling this a spoof here. Uh, it, it could be, uh, 
need to kind of take a look at some bigger picture stuff here, but uh, uh, potentially a flip of the book that, you know, larger traders are coming in and saying, you know, um, we believe that uh, anything that comes up to 2650 is a deal. And they're willing to, let's see if they stay in the book here or not. Okay. And they're willing to grab as much as they can. Okay. Now here's our answer. Okay. It uh, looks like uh, this guy is, um, uh, he's, he's kind of staying in the book. Uh, it's kind of trading, but look at, look up above here, 51, he pulled. So, and, and this guy pulled as well. So this looks more like a spoof now to me. Okay. Because we're, and we can determine this, this is fake liquidity. Okay. This isn't fake here. I mean, we, we're seeing that it, it's transacting into this area here. Some of it is pulling though too. Okay. But look at this guy. So high, high liquidity and pulls up here as well. They don't have the intent to trade. They had the intent to press the market into these lower areas. Uh, and let's see if our iceberg order says something now. You know, and see some, some large icebergs in some of these areas. Uh, not as many as I, I was uh, assuming there. Okay. Uh, now, now that these guys are going to pull their liquidity, um, you know, the market, uh, uh, the buyers are starting to step in on the other side here. Okay. And if the, if the buyers, uh, if they want to, um, I mean, you can see they're lifting the offer here. Okay. So um, uh, we're looking for targets on that. And um, I'm not really seeing much here. Maybe up at this 55, they'll start to come back in. But the uh, higher liquidity is down here at 45. Okay. All right, guys. Well, some interesting stuff to see. Uh, this little kind of flush through this 2650 area here. Uh, and um, uh, look at the buyers starting to step in on the other side. Okay. Can you see the order flow? Can you see how clearly, like, the, you know, they're, they're uh, uh, buying here, okay, at a higher area. Okay, we need to get up above actually 54 and see uh, a little more significant volume trade up here. And, uh, uh, you know, we'd be looking for, uh, uh, you know, to see how it behaves up here, if it returns back into the range or not. Um, but um, that's the potential of um, uh, this, this being a reversal, okay, has that potential, okay, because there's a lot of buying here. We just need to see it up at higher levels. Anyway, let's wrap it up. Uh, for those of you signed up for the advanced uh, uh, webinar, we'll uh, see you right over there. Okay, take care. We'll see you tomorrow.